All right, well, happy Memorial Day, uh, Monday morning at 10.02 a.m. We're doing these missional moments where I go through one of the five, what we call practices of peace, just an easy way to remember it. Uh, practicing pause, eat, ask, commune, and examine. And today we're looking at the third practice, the practice of asking great questions that spark spiritual conversation, especially in a culture that is uh, oftentimes starved of transcendence. Uh, so it's a very uh, important practice um, and one that takes a lot of thought, actually. Uh, but before I get into that, you know, many of you maybe have been wondering, like, why do I do these things at 10.02 a.m.? And the reason for that is a couple of years ago, <clears throat> uh, a speaker had challenged the people in that audience to set their alarm every day, every weekday at 10.02 a.m. Uh, to, pr uh, to pray Luke chapter 10 verse 2. And Luke chapter 10, verse 2 says, um, uh, it's something like, you know, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to raise up workers uh, for his harvest. And it was a prayer that really struck me because on the one hand, it says the harvest is plentiful. There is a great spiritual thirst out there. Um, and the prayer every day reminds me to pray that God would raise up workers for his harvest here in New York City. So at 10.02 a.m. is actually a version of this practice of asking. Uh, it's asking God uh, for his work, his kingdom to come. And so uh, as you think about the practice of asking, part of it is asking God, praying for friends of yours, dear friends of yours, uh, to come to know the love and the hope that it is that's going to be found in Jesus Christ. Uh, but the practice of asking is learning to ask these great spiritual questions. Now, if you look in the Bible, it's actually pretty remarkable when you think about the role that questions play in God's pursuit of the human race. If you go back to Adam, what's the very first thing that God does to Adam and Eve after they have fallen uh, in the garden? He asks them, where are you? Why are you hiding? Uh, or you get to Cain and Abel. And what happens there? What does God do when he searches for Cain after the first murder? He says, uh, where is your brother? And of course, Cain says, I'm, am I my brother's keeper? Or you look at the ministry of Jesus. Jesus is constantly asking questions. Uh, he asks things like, do you want to get well? And it sparks a spiritual conversation. He asks, uh, why do you call me good uh, to talk about issues of morality and absolute good? Uh, of course, he famously asks, who do you say that I am? What about you? Who do you say that I am? And so the role of questions in kind of sparking a spiritual journey and helping uh, the, the spiritual journey of another always has played a critical role. Now, in our modern times, I think Christians are known more for preaching at people and telling them information rather than asking great, converse, uh, asking great questions that create these spiritual conversations. Uh, I had a great example of that recently. You might have seen that I uh, served recently out at Crew Inner City in Long Island City. And one of the staff folks there, who was also an elder at a church, as we were volunteering and packing uh, these boxes together, there was a volunteer who wasn't a follower of Jesus. And during the course of packing these boxes, the kinds of questions uh, that this staff person asked of this volunteer uh, were incredible. And we had this amazing spiritual conversation as a result of it. So how do we get in the practice practically of asking great spiritual questions? Well, it's going to take a lot of reflection for you to say, what are good questions I could ask? But here are a couple of examples. Easy to remember, there are four H's. You can ask about people's history, their heart, their hopes, or their hurts. So history, just ask, uh, tell me more about your story. Did you have any spirituality or religion in your upbringing? And that can just open up a conversation that goes beyond uh, just kind of the day-to-day -day ordinary things to open up a spiritual conversation. They're telling you, sharing you with you about their spiritual upbringing. Uh, heart, uh, what are you passionate about? What, what do you love about this world? What gets you excited? And you can just listen for what God is doing in their life as they share with you what they're passionate about. Uh, hopes. What do you hope for? What do you dream about? What are your ambitions in life? Right, let me pause one second. Sorry. That was my wife's 10.02 alarm that I had thought I'd dismissed, but apparently I only uh, paused 
for five minutes. So now it's 10.07. Uh, so history, what's your story, spiritual upbringing, heart, what are you passionate about? Uh, third is hopes. What are your hopes and dreams and ambitions? Uh, what's your purpose in life? Uh, what gets you out in the morning? Uh, up in the morning. Uh, and fourthly, and this may be the hardest one to ask, but it may actually open up uh, the most fascinating and most vulnerable of conversations. So it'll take a lot of trust. But Hertz, uh, what's one thing you might want to change in your life today, right now? Now, those are just a couple of um, examples, history, heart, hopes, and hurts. Uh, but stop and think. Think about the people you love in your life who are open who are asking spiritual questions, who are wondering about these things, and ask yourself, can I come up with 10 great spiritual questions that I could ask of people? And can you try one or two of those out this week? Ask questions, develop a curiosity, uh, believe that when you're reaching out in faith, you're actually joining Christ in something that he's already doing. And so when you ask questions, you're looking to discern the work of Jesus in the life of somebody else. So try that this week, um, the spiritual practice of asking. And when you add them to uh, pause, we arise at a Sabbath delight. Eat, we recover the spiritual significance in meals. And as we eat, we ask great and genuine questions that spark spiritual conversations. In a culture oftentimes starved of transcendence, these small practices could be transformative. So join us on Thursday. We're doing a Q&A again uh, just to get through some of the practic practicals and tactics of this. So we hope you'll join us on our Zoom call uh, then. So thanks for joining us today. Have a great Memorial Day, a great day off today, and uh, God bless you. We'll see you soon.